Thank you so much for joining us for our worship service here at Encounter. We're so excited to have you with us this morning. I just wanted to share with you a few things before we get started. First of all, we are back and we are having services once again. We are meeting outdoors throughout the month of June. The idea behind that is we are trying to minimize as much risk to COVID-19 as possible. So we have marked the ground. There are six foot by four foot boxes for people to sit in. So please bring your own chairs. We'll have chairs for you if you are not, not able to bring one. But also each box is about six feet apart from each other. We have extra masks, we have hand sanitizers. Uh, we've also gone touchless on our offering. So we're doing everything that we can to make it as safe of an environment as possible. If you are not at a point where you feel comfortable coming yet, completely fine. We will continue to post our services. And then once we are able to go live and move back indoors, we'll be live streaming our services once again. If you want to stay connected with the things that are happening here at Encounter, just grab your phones and text at sign up ECC to 81010. And again, your information is protected. It's just a way for us to be able to reach out and be able to share with you and you can interact with us as well. The great thing about it is it's just the same app that teachers use to be able to interact with their students uh, throughout the year. So again, it's just a great way to stay connected with the things that are happening here at Encounter. Also, if you would like to follow along with today's message, as well as have the reminders through the announcements, then what you can do is put your phone in camera mode, aim it at the, at the screen, uh, the, it'll pick up the QR code, and then from there you'll get a link. Follow that link, and with that you will have access to the announcements, access to today's message. And not only that, you could take mess, you could take notes on the message, you can share it with friends. So it's just a great way to continue to be connected with the things that are happening here at Encounter, as well as well as following along with the sermon. Well, again, thank you so much. God bless, and we will be getting started shortly. Right now, I am in Yahats, Oregon. That's right. Can you say that? Yahats, Oregon. <laughs> and I'm actually on vacation with my family. I had a really great plan because where we're at right now is a beachfront house. So I was actually going to film the beach behind me, but it started raining today. So I had to make a quick adjustment. But still, I'm so excited to be here with you this morning. Uh, also, I wanted to take a moment too. If you tried to tune in last week, uh, there was a mistake that I made and it caused our post from last week to be pulled from YouTube and from Facebook. Remedied that this week. And uh, so hopefully uh, this is posted and you have no problems and you're able to enjoy the service for today. But again, I'm so excited to be with you and to be able to encourage you uh, through this message. Uh, again, just for those of you that call Encounter Home and want to continue to be able to support our church. Uh, there are three ways that you can do that. Uh, the first is if you wanted to send in your giving. Uh, that's the address there, Encounter Community Church, 18749, uh, Crenshaw Boulevard, Torrance, California, 90524. So you can maybe give via that. Uh, the other option is to do it via online giving. So go to encountercommunity.church, go to our link that says online giving, and you'll be able to give there. And then finally, if you wanted to do it via text, you can text uh, the amount that you want to give to 424-373-3583 for both the online giving and the text giving. If you've never done it before, then what will happen is it will give you a form to fill out. You can, form, you can fill it out or not, but that's for just tax recording purposes. We're not utilizing that to try to take your information or, or anything like that. But 
again, thank you for being with us this morning. And I just wanted to take a moment to simply pray. Father, we just thank you for this incredible opportunity just to be able to come together. And Father, we just pray that you would allow your presence just to be made known right now. Father, that you would soften our hearts to what it is that you desire to do and to communicate. And Lord, that you would again allow us to be able to walk away uplifted and encouraged, especially in this time of looking at adjusting to the new normal caused by COVID-19. And all these things we ask in your name. Amen.
don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when Again, Father, I'm so grateful for this morning, so thankful that we've had this chance to be able to worship and adore you. And Father, we just again pray that your hand will be upon this message and upon this time for us to be able to be encouraged in our relationship with you. And all these things we ask in your name. Amen. I remember it was the mid-1980s, and I was in my living room, and I was watching the Motown reunion show. Some of you may actually remember that. And it was going through and Smokey Robinson and Miracles had done some things and you know the Four Tops had done some things. There were some other incredible Motown. I think, I think Dana Ross did some singing. There were some incredible, incredible uh, shows and experiences you know with that. But then towards the middle of the show the Jacksons came on. That's right, the Jacksons. And so to see like them together once again doing a performance was just amazing. But then after that, the lights went down and they went back up and it was just Michael Jackson on the stage. And the drum hits and the keyboards began to kick in and it broke into Billie Jean. And Michael Jackson does his classic, you know, Billy, I'm not going to do the dance for you, so you're safe that way. <laughs> well, Michael Jackson does his classic Billy Jean moves and just doing his thing. And then all of a sudden, he does the moonwalk. And the world went crazy. I remember going back to school, and it was one of those things that we talked about. And, you know, you could hear people talking about it. That, and it, the interesting thing to me was... People were saying, Michael Jackson has invented this brand new dance called the moonwalk. And when I got together with my friends, we were like, no, he didn't invent it. Because they had been doing the moonwalk in the hood for years, for years. But I think Michael Jackson was the first one to take it to this public platform for people to be able to see and actually became one of his staple moves, right? And, and we all know, like, whenever you're going to see Michael Jackson in concert, you're going to see the moonwalk. 
But the funny thing about it is, again, it was something that was already done. You know, it says this in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9. It says, again, history merely repeats itself. It's all been done before. Nothing under the sun is truly new. Nothing under the sun is truly new. And, and I mean, think about that. Think about some of the trends that we see coming back now that we saw as kids. And it seems like it cycles back through. Like there's certain dances that you'll see now and it's like, oh, that's just a modified running man or it's just a modification of this dance. But man, we were doing that dance back in the 80s and 90s. Like you, you see some of those and it's just amazing how things come about. I remember at one point, like bell-bottom jeans started to make a comeback. You remember that? When bell bought the, when 70s outfits and what about 80s? Remember when 80s outfits started to make a comeback? Now, of course, there's certain things from the 80s we don't want to see make a comeback, right? Like feathered hairdos. <laughs> we don't want to see that make a comeback. But again, the idea behind this is telling us that there's nothing new under the sun. You know, when we look at some of the things that we are challenged with today, we're talking about COVID-19. I mean, we can go through the list and there isn't. It, it, it's been done before. It's happened before. And God's been through it all. So, so I'm saying all that to say this, is that God's not surprised by what it is that we face or the challenges that we go through. He's not surprised by it at all. I mean, we can look at some of the racial challenges you know, that we're having right now. And here's the truth is, you know, in the 1960s, we had racial challenge, 1990s, right? We had the, we had the Los Angeles riots. I mean, we can go through the list and we can see like, man, some of the challenges that we're facing now, we've been facing throughout the course of our history. I mean, and we can say that it started with slavery, but we can go back even then. Uh, there's a passage in Acts where it talks about the Grecian Jews were complaining against the Hebraic Jews. And people believe that that was because of racial tension. So this idea of racial tension really is nothing new. And what about COVID-19 and, and this pandemic? You know, we've had the bubonic plague in the past. We've had the black plague in the past. I mean, we can go through that list. And in the Bible, it also talks about the idea of famines and plagues and those kind of challenges. So again, nothing new under the sun when it comes to that as well. So we can go back and like I said, we can look through the list. And it is hard because right now, when you're in the middle of it, it feels like it's new, doesn't it? It feels like it's fresh. And I think because of the fact that we are in the middle of it at this point, seeing something that feels like has never been done before. And isn't that what they're saying about uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is that there's aspects of it. And there, there is some truth to it, that there's some aspect, aspects of it that are new. But the reality is, it's not a surprise to God because it's one of those elements of life that continues to persist and there will be ebbs and flows. There, there's a season for this and a season for that. It's one of those things that we see that tends to be consistent in Scripture. And, and why am I saying all that? Because last week we started a brand new series called The New Normal. And here's what we're looking at is this idea that life before COVID-19 will never go back to the way that it was. We'll never go back to the way that it was. And so we, we find ourselves in this place of, well, if I'm in this new normal, well, what does it mean for me? Because again, based upon what we've just seen in scripture, there really isn't a new complete normal, at least to God, because God has experienced it, because God has seen it, because God knows it. And so in that, what does it mean for the believer? Well, we're gonna look, we're gonna look at two aspects today. And, and here's the first one, is knowing that because there is nothing new, because of the fact that I can trust God with there being nothing new, because of the fact that God has handled it and walked through it before, and we are still here. As a matter of fact, in Scripture, that's what it encourages us to do. In Scripture, it says, don't forget the work that God has done. Don't forget the ways that God has made himself present. Don't forget the ways that God has made himself known. Don't forget the ways that God has answered prayer. So one of the things that may be great for you to do is to take a step back 
and began to look through, okay, what are some examples of some of the things that I see that I'm dealing with today and see, can we find some of those examples in scripture and how God did it, God handled it then, how people overcame then, because then what we can do is, like I said before, is we can take those, those principles and we can apply them to life right now. If there's nothing new under the sun, then again, that means that we can trust the simple fact that God really is in control. If he's seen all the events, if he's dealt with all of the events, then we can trust him through all of the events as well. Psalm 23.4 says this to us. It says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. And so again, this is just simply reminding us of this. If, if, that, if, if God, if you walked with me through my challenges, if you walked with me through my darkest moments, if you walked with me through my greatest challenges, then God, you will walk with me through this. And I love it. It says, it says the darkest valleys, the darkest valleys. So it, it doesn't matter how dark the darkness gets. God, you will be with me. And it says your rod. You know what the rod was? It's referring to a, a tool that shepherds would use. And the rod would be the rod of discipline. And he's saying that, God, you still love me enough to correct me. You still love me enough to correct me. Because sometimes some of the worst decisions that we make is in our darkest valleys, isn't it? It, it, it seems to be that way. And so, God, you love me enough to correct me, to get me back on path so that I, I don't destroy my life. And it talks about your, your staff, your rod and your staff. One of the neat things is when you looked at a shepherd's staff, on the end of that staff would be a hook. And so what would happen is when a sheep would go wayward, what the, what the shepherd would do is he would take that staff, he would hook the sheep, and he'd pull the sheep right back into the fold. And there's the beauty of that as well, is it's saying that even though we may struggle in the darkest valleys, even though we may feel as though we want to walk away from God, because, because God has seen it before, because God has walked through it before, then what's going to happen is God's going to love us so much that he's going to reach out to pull us back into the fold. How far will God go? Well, in Luke chapter 15, Jesus gives an example. And he talks about the shepherd being willing to leave the 99 sheep in order to go after the one. Because the one sheep matters. You matter. And so even in the midst of this challenge, if you walked away from the healthy other 99 sheep to go on your own path, then really what this passage is saying is that God's going to go after you. He's going to pursue you. And the interesting thing is, why does a sheep lead the fold? is because it's looking for something new. It's looking for a new experience. It's looking for a new way. It's looking for a new comfort. And so it leaves the fold in order to find, there's something that has grabbed its curiosity. And so what happens is, again, because the shepherd has been through it before, because the shepherd understands that and the shepherd sees that and the shepherd knows that, the shepherd also knows what's best for the sheep. And so again, that shepherd will go after the sheep to rescue it, to draw back in, to see it reconnect with those who are part of the family. And, and so here's the beauty of this. If there's nothing new under the sun, if there's nothing new under the sun, if God has been through it before, that means that if I decide to follow him and I can trust in him and I can depend on him and rely on him, then now that creates greater implications in my life and what that means in following him as well. You know, it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. He lives in you. So no matter what it is that you're going through or facing or dealing with, God is still alive and he's still alive in you. But it goes on to say, and just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by his same spirit living within you. 
So again, this reminds us that no matter what it is that we go through or deal with or the challenges that we faced or, or, or the ways that we want to give up, is that God is still alive and he's still in us. And so I, I just want to encourage you because sometimes when it comes to the new normal, and we talked about this a little bit last week, if, again, there are those of you watching who didn't get a chance to maybe see the message last week, again, like I said before, because of a mistake that I made, it has been posted, and you actually can find it on YouTube, you can also find it on Facebook, it also is available on our website as well. I wanna encourage you, go back and watch that, because again, it is just a reminder of as we're going through this, what are some ways that we can begin to just respond to what God is, is doing? So what we're doing over the course of this series is we are trying to figure out what that new normal is and then figuring out what the new normal, what does it look like in our lives? And we broke it down and talked about it last week and we're gonna continue to do that over the course of this series. But here's the thing that's really interesting. As I begin to look at the new normal and what it means for us as believers and what it means for us as we begin to follow him, there is this element that what we can begin to say, if, if nothing really is new to God, then there is a level of trust that we can have with him. And again, that level of trust can begin to be exemplified to the world that is around us, there should be no greater reflection of faith and trust than those of us who have decided to follow God. There should be, and, and as a result of that, what people should see is when they look at us is this people that, that have this confidence in God and who he is and the way that he handles life. And, and I just want to ask you, just, just to be honest, have you... Have you lost some of that confidence? Maybe you're struggling financially. Maybe you're struggling emotionally or mentally or spiritually. And somewhere along the lines, you've, you've, you've lost some of that confidence. And if so, I want to encourage you to grab your Bible when you get a chance. And just because of time, I don't have time to go through everything in detail today, but I want to encourage you to grab your Bible when you get a chance and just read Psalm 13. And again, here's the thing is if you're looking at your Bible, just, just open it up right into the middle boop, and you'll find Psalms. <laughs> it pretty much works out in every Bible. It doesn't matter what size, open it up to the middle and boop, you're in Psalms. But Psalm 13, or the great thing is, you know, today because of our phones, we can just click and go right to it as well. But read Psalm 13. Read Psalm 40, read Psalm 63. And what's happening in all of these passages is you'll find someone who is expressing a longing, a desire for God. You'll find someone who's questioning and wondering, God, where are you? You'll find someone who's, who's looking at the fact that they're going through the muck and the mire and the struggles and the challenges of life. But then what you'll also see is at the end of it, that there's a declaration. There's a declaration that is made. Even in the midst of God, I, 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 don't, I don't understand what it is I'm going through. I'm still in the middle of what it is I'm going through. I'm still going through the doubts that I'm going through. But at the end of each one of those, there is this declaration. And the declaration is simply this. God, I will trust. Or God, I will praise. Or God, I will adore. But there is this aspect where there is a decision that is made. No matter what I go through, God, I will hold on to your character. I'll hold on to your character. And then as believers, and those of us who decided to follow Jesus, well, what does that look like? If I've decided to trust God and hold on to his character, hold on to his trust, and really begin to depend upon him, what does it look like? Well, in James chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, it simply says this. It says, What good is it, dear brothers, if you say you have faith 
but don't show it by your actions. Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing and say, goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good is that? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. It is dead and useless. So here's the question that we wanted to pose for today. The question is simply this. What are you doing to strengthen your faith? What are you doing to strengthen your faith? And, and here's the thing that's really interesting. If you go back, and as I said before, as you look through scripture, here is what you will find, is when people had encounters with God, is when people had challenges, when people had wrestles with their faith, the interesting thing that God would do is God would say, trust me, now get moving. Trust me, now get to work. Trust me, now serve. Trust me, now build. And so the idea behind this is that you begin to take your life and you begin to invest your life into the lives of others. Faith by itself, if it does not produce a desire, and not just a desire, an action to begin to see change around us, that faith is dead. And one of the things I talked about last week is with COVID-19 and some of the challenges that we're finding with George Floyd, and we look at this whole idea of Black Lives Matter, as we look at all of these elements, you know what has, what's happened is the door for swinging and the door for making a difference for God has swung wide open. Not the door for swinging, that's it. We're just not going to talk about that door. <laughs> but the door for making a difference has swung wide open. And so God has opened this door for us to be able to step through. So what are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with it? How are we going to step into our community? How are we going to step into the lives of others? How are we going to step in and really begin to make a difference? Faith without works is dead. And again, I, I think that that's one of the reasons why so many Christians are struggling with their faith today. Because what we've done is we've turned faith into faith itself. It's just this, this emotion or this thing that I hold on to. Usually it is emotionally driven, but what we've, we've, we've minimized it to just something that really has no real substance that carries us through when things get difficult, when things get hard. So what will be the story of your faith? You know, it goes on to say in James chapter 2, it says this, Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds, but I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Is useless. So can't you see that faith, if it doesn't produce anything in your life, It's useless. And when I say it doesn't produce anything in your life, I'm not just talking about, because there's some aspects. Do you want to grow spiritually? Yes. Do you want to grow in your understanding of scripture? Yes. Do you want to grow in your relationship with God? Yes. Those are all elements. But here's the thing. Think about it this way. What happens to our bodies if all we do is take in, take in, take in, take in, take in. We reach a point where we become overweight. And so the thing to deal with that is to begin to do what? Is you adjust your diet, but the thing is you have to get some activity into your life. And so I think what happens is as we take in, we take in, we take in, we become spiritually lethargic. And then what happens is that begins to kill our faith and it begins to kill our trust 
It begins to kill her reliance upon God. Healthy faith is the result of someone who takes what they're learning in their relationship with God and they begin to pour it into the lives of others. So here's the question, because that's what this new normal is requiring, is the beauty of this, and this is really interesting, is I think what this new normal is doing is it's putting us in this place where Christianity was originally intended to be, where we're pouring into the lives of others, making a difference in them, loving them, and serving them. It says this in James chapter 2, verse 23, 22 and 23. You see, his faith and actions worked together. His, his actions made his faith complete. And so it happened, just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called a friend of God. So the example that we see in scripture that is given is the example of Abraham. And here's what happens, is God appears to Abraham and he says, hey, look, I'm gonna do something in your life, but in order for you to experience that, you need to leave everything you know. And so Abraham does it. He steps out and he begins to have this incredible experience in his life, where later on, God tells him, I'm gonna make you, um, I'm gonna make your seed countless. And, and not only that, you will change, the, your seed will change this entire world. And it's through Abraham that of course Jesus Christ is brought into his world. He's one of the descendants of Abraham. Now, the beauty of this is the Bible says that he acted upon his faith. And in acting upon his faith, it was counted as righteousness. And so that is what it looks like. If I really believe that God's going to carry me through, if I really believe that this is new, if, if I really believe that he's been through this, sorry, that he understands what it is that I'm going through, if I really believe in him, then what it's going to do is it's going to be motivated in action and making a difference in the lives of others. So there's nothing new under the sun. That's our main point. There's nothing new under the sun. God's walked through it. God's been through it. God's experienced it before. And the result of that is if we do trust him, then it's going to be the result in action that I'm going to begin to serve, to love, to give, to build, to strengthen, to encourage, to uplift. It's going to be reflected in those ways. And I pray that that is what we will see. And that is what you are motivated to do. That God, from this point forward, I'm really going to allow my life to be utilized to make a difference. Why? Because there's nothing new. You've been through it before. You understand it. You walk through it. And God, you'll walk through it with me. And God, you will walk me through it. And as a result, because I know that you were there, then God, I'm going to look at how can I invest in others? How can I make a difference in my community? How can I love and serve? and give. That is what Encounter is all about, is building a church that is taking a step to invest in its community and love and serve its community. So if you call Encounter home, I'm challenging you to step into your community and serve it and love it. And if you're someone that's kind of checking things out, I also want to encourage you as well. Stepping into your community, love, and serve. Because here's the thing that's really interesting, is when you do, you may find out that I've stepped into the place where God is at work. And as he begins to work more and more through you, then what will happen is you will see your hope grow, develop, and change. You will see your faith come alive and become new. So that's my prayer. And I pray that that's our prayer as well. Father, I just want to take this time to encourage everyone who's watching this. Lord, I pray that you will just, again, allow your presence in your heart to just be made known. Father, that this is a point that we will say yes to you, yes to pursuing you, yes to loving you. 
And the way that that will manifest itself is, Father, we'll go out, we'll serve our neighbors, we'll serve our community, we'll serve people at our jobs, we'll serve anyone that you open the door for us to begin to express your love and your mercy to. God, again, there's nothing new. And I pray that we will trust in you. And in the midst of that trust, it will spur us on to action and good deeds. In all these things we ask in your name. Amen. I just wanted to encourage you with this. Again, if you are watching on Facebook or watching on YouTube, if you would follow or subscribe, it's just a way that whenever we post new things or whenever things are coming up, that you can be able to, to be the first ones to get notified about that. Whenever we post new vlogs or post new um, podcasts or those kind of things, you'll be updated and you'll be one of the first ones to know. If you missed the announcements before, they're going to replay afterwards. But again, thank you so much. God bless you. And I'll be seeing you soon. Thank you so much for joining us for our worship service here at Encounter. We're so excited to have you with us this morning. Just wanted to share with you a few things before we get started. First of all, we are back and we are having services once again. We are meeting outdoors throughout the month of June. The idea behind that is we are trying to minimize as much risk to COVID-19 as possible. So we have marked the ground. There are six foot by four foot boxes for people to sit in. So please bring your own chairs. We'll have chairs for you if you are not, not able to bring one. But also each box is about six feet apart from each other. We have extra masks, we have hand sanitizers. Uh, we've also gone touchless in our offering. So we're doing everything that we can to make it as safe of an environment as possible. If you are not at a point where you feel comfortable coming yet, completely fine. We will continue to post our services. And then once we are able to go live and move back indoors, we'll be live streaming our services once again. If you want to stay connected with the things that are happening here at Encounter, just grab your phones and text at sign up ECC to 81010. And again, your information is protected. It's just a way for us to be able to reach out and be able to share with you and you can interact with us as well. The great thing about it is it's just the same app that teachers use to be able to interact with their students uh, throughout the year. So again, it's just a great way to stay connected with the things that are happening here at Encounter. Also, if you would like to follow along with today's message, as well as have the reminders through the announcements, then what you can do is put your phone in camera mode, aim it at the, at the screen, uh, the, it'll pick up the QR code, and then from there you'll get a link. Follow that link, and with that you will have access to the announcements, access to today's message. And not only that, you could take mess, you could take notes on the message, you can share it with friends. So it's just a great way to continue to be connected with the things that are happening here at Encounter, as well as well as following along with the sermon. Well, again, thank you so much. God bless, and we will be getting started shortly.